of the most embarrassing factors of the pseudoscience of macroevolution theory is that almost since its beginning, and even up to rather recent times, the evolution industry has been wrought with fraud, sloppy mistakes, and purpose deceit. These claims are well documented and many will be presented in this film. The most disturbing thing is that some of these frauds and deceits are still held out today in so-called science textbooks as fact. The ardent evolutionist hopes against hope that the ignorant masses will not see the shell game being played before their eyes. But alas, films such as this one, books and scientific articles are going worldwide at lightning speed thanks to the internet and the masses are being awakened. In 1859, in his book Origin of the Species, Charles Darwin said, why, if species have descended from other species by insensibly fine graduations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? This is from chapter 6 of his book entitled Difficulties on the Theory. Scientists who believe evolution have been searching for transitional forms ever since, but they have not been able to find them. Therefore, fraudulent fossils have been manufactured and deceitfully presented as transitional forms. This is particularly interesting since virtually every modern evolution textbook will proudly proclaim that the preponderance of fossil evidence is one of the many proofs of the fact of evolution. Yet nothing could be further from the truth. According to anthropologist Tom Kemp, in his famous review, Mammal-Like Reptiles and the Origin of Mammals, in no single adequately documented case is it possible to trace a transition, species by species, from one genus to another. Dwayne T. Gish, Ph.D., in his book, Evolution, the Fossils Still Say No, states, Even though this transition is supposed to have taken 100 million years, not a single intermediate fossil has ever been discovered. Dr. Colin Patterson, senior paleontologist, British Museum of Natural History states, I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil for which one could make a watertight argument. It is easy enough, he says, to make up stories of how one form gave rise to another. Evolutionists believe that macroevolution, one kind of living organism, eventually becomes another kind of living organism. It has been proven in the fossil record. 
However, if there is overwhelming evidence in the fossil record that macroevolution has occurred, then why is it necessary to make fraudulent fossils? The reason is because contrary to what is commonly believed and taught, macroevolution has no proof whatever in the fossil record. Let's examine some of the more famous evolution hoaxes. The Archaeoraptor, the most recent, perhaps the most infamous evolution fraud, was committed in China and published in 1999 in the journal National Geographic. Dinosaur bones were put together with the bones of a newer species of bird and they tried to pass it off as a very important new evolutionary intermediate. National Geographic later had to print a correction and further research revealed that they had been fooled by the fraudulent fossil. Uh, if you do the research you'll find that a Chinese farmer glued together the head of a bird and parts of a reptile and completely fooled the worldwide scientific community including National Geographic with what they thought was a transitional form. It was called Archaeoraptor. You're always wrong. Only a handful of scientists ever saw Archaeoraptor, but everyone who did noted that it was a composite piece, and the artistic amateurs who paid for the fossil were repeatedly warned that some parts of it might not even belong to the whole. Popular press foolishly scooped the story prior to peer review, where it was instantly exposed as a fake by multiple experts, and each submission to scientific journals was immediately rejected. Archaeoraptor therefore fooled no one in the scientific community at all. The irony there is that the tail of the alleged Archaeoraptor turned out to belong to the as yet undiscovered Microraptor, a four-winged and apparently gliding feathered dinosaur which turned out to be even more compelling proof of avian evolution from dinosaurs than Archaeopteryx was in Darwin's day. The scientific process of peer review seeks out and exposes fraud by design, but anti-evolutionist arguments are withheld from peer review because they are driven entirely by frauds, including misstatements, out-of-context quote mining, and contrived or distorted falsehoods in terms erroneously redefined into instigative reactionary nonsense unintelligible as anything other than propaganda. In short, if creationists knew how to expose a fraud, they wouldn't be creationists anymore. The Brontosaurus this dinosaur, presented in many evolution textbooks, never existed. It has been discovered and well chronicled that the body skeleton of one dinosaur was found without a head. Some four miles away, another head from another skeleton was found and placed on the original body skeleton. This head was from another distinctly different dinosaur. Thus, the Brontosaurus was deceitfully created by the evolutionist. The